welcome back to my channel so today let's start about eukaryotes okay so without any delay let's begin with the class eukaryotic cells are generally 10 to 100 micrometers in diameter and thus have a thousand to a million times the volume of typical prokaryotes so if we see the eukaryotic cells they generally they are generally having 10 to 100 micrometers in diameter and they are having a thousand to a million times volume of typical prokaryotes okay so eukaryotes are having the more volume than prokaryotes it is not size however but a profusion of membrane enclosed organelles each with a specialized function that best characterizes eukaryotic cells figure 1.5 so here the eukaryotes are not in size, but its profusion membrane enclosed organs are specialized with the functions which is characterizing the eukaryotic cells. Okay. In fact, eukaryotic structure and function are more complex than those of prokaryotes at all levels of organization from the molecular level on up. So, if we see the eukaryotic structure and function, they are having more complex structure than prokaryotes okay at all levels of organizations eukaryotes and prokaryotes have developed according to fundamentally different evolutionary strategies so eukaryotes and prokaryotes are developed in different fundamental evolutionary strategies okay prokaryotes have exploited the advantages of simplicity and miniaturization their rapid growth rate permits them to occupy ecological niches in which there may be drastic fluctuations of the available nutrients. So if you see the prokaryotes, they have been exploited the advantages of simplicity and miniaturization. Okay. So these prokaryotes having a rapid growth rate which is permitting them to occupy the ecological niches which is having a drastic fluctuations in nutrients. Okay. In, contrast, in contrast, the complexity of the eukaryotes which renders them larger and more slowly growing than prokaryotes give them the competitive advantage in stable environments with the limited resources. So if we see the in contrast with the complexity of the eukaryotes, they are rendering them larger and they are having more slower, slowly growth than prokaryotes and these eukaryotes give them the competitive advantages in stable environments with limited resources. So if you see the figure 1.6 here they have shown that in limited resources how the eukaryotes are competing, competing with advantages in stable environment. Okay. It is therefore erroneous to consider prokaryotes as evolutionary primitive with respect to eukaryotes. So eukaryotes is having an erroneous to consider prokaryotes as evolutionary primitive with respect to eukaryotes. Both type of organisms are well adapted to their respective lifestyles. So both eukaryotes and prokaryotes have a type of are a type of organisms which are adapted to their respective lifestyles. The earliest known microfossils of eukaryotes date from approximate 1.4 billion years ago. Some 2.4 billion years ago, after life arose. So the microfossils of eukaryotes is dated from approximate 1.4 billion years ago. But some of the eukaryotes have been arose, arose after 2.4 billion years. Okay. This observation supports the classical notion that eukaryotes are descended from a highly developed prokaryote, possibly a mycoplasma. So if we see the observations of a eukaryote, it is supporting the classical notion. These eukaryotes are descended from a highly developed prokaryotes known as a mycoplasma. The difference between eukaryotes and modern prokaryotes, however, are so profound as to render this 
hypothesis improbable. So here the difference between eukaryotes and modern prokaryotes are performed as to render this hypothesis improbable. Perhaps the early eukaryotes, which according to Ooze evidences, evolved from a primordial life forms were relatively unsuccessful and hence rare. So here, according to Ooze evidence, is saying that these eukaryotes evolved from a primordial life forms. Okay, were relatively unsuccessful and hence rare. Only after they have, only after they have developed some of the complex organs described in the following sections did they become common enough to generate significant fossil remains. So after they have developed some of the complex organs, they have described the following sections which is becoming common enough to generate significant fossils which are remaining. Okay. A cellular architecture. Now we will be seeing about the cellular architecture architecture. Eukaryotic cells like prokaryotes are bounded by the plasma membrane. So as we know that eukaryotic cells like prokaryotes are bounded by a plasma membrane. The large size of eukaryotic cells results in their surface to volume ratios being much smaller than those of prokaryotes. So the large size of eukaryotic cells which is resulting in the surface to volume ratios is being much smaller than those of the prokaryotes. The surface area of an object increases as the square of its radius, whereas volume does so as the cube. So the surface area of the object is increasing the square of its radius, whereas volume does it does so as the cube. Okay. This geometrical constraints coupled with the fact that many essential enzymes are membrane associated partially rationalizes the large amount of intracellular membranes in eukaryotes. The plasma membrane typically constitutes less than 10% of the membrane in eukaryotic cells. So here, in geometrical constraints, eukaryotes are coupled with the fact of many and essential enzymes, which are membrane associated enzymes. Okay, they are partially rationalizes the large amounts of intracellular membranes in eukaryotes. So the plasma membrane typically constitutes less than 10% of the membrane in a eukaryotic cell. Okay. Since all the matter that enters or leaves a cell must somehow pass through the plasma membrane. So this here matter which is entering inside a cell or leaves the cell is somehow passing through its plasma membrane only. Okay. So through the plasma membrane the matter has to enter or leave a cell. Okay. Surface areas of many eukaryotic cells are increased by numerous projections or imaginations. So the surface area of the eukaryotic cells is increased numerously, okay, which is projecting or imaginating. Okay. Moreover, portions of the plasma membrane often but involved in a process known as endocytosis, so that the cell surrounds portions of the external medium. So if we see the endocytosis, the plasma membrane often but inwards of the inward of the cell. So inside the cell, the bud is formed. So at, at later stages, the plasma membrane is pinched off. We will be calling that as a endocytosis. Okay. Thus, eukaryotic cells can engulf and digest food particles such as bacteria, whereas prokaryotes are limited to the absorption of individual nutrient molecules. So if we see the eukaryotic cells, they can engulf and digest food particles such as bacteria, whereas prokaryotes are have and are limited to the absorption of individual nutrient molecules. The reverse of the endocytosis, a process termed exocytosis, is a common eukaryotic secretory mechanism. So if we see the reverse process of an endocytosis, we will be knowing it as a exocytosis, which is a common example. It is utilized in the process eukaryotic secretory mechanisms. So okay friends, thank you. Thanks for watching. In the next class, we will be studying about about the nucleus contains the cell dna from here we will be continuing the class okay okay friends thank you thanks for watching bye bye